When you watch Bo Burnham's eighth grade, what do you see? So, first things first. For this young father, what I saw is a terrifying portent of the future. Truly the scariest thing I've ever experienced. After my first viewing, I just wanted to apologize to random adolescents on the street for somehow failing to make their world better. But when I show it to my parents, they see something else. Everything that's wrong with kids these days. Cell phones, social media, and not enough parenting. And that difference, how I see the film compared to others, reveals the roots of media literacy and its many layers. But it's not just the audience's interpretation. Eighth grade itself is chock full of examples as to why we need a better understanding of media. But what exactly is media literacy? Why does it matter? And how does this film demonstrate its value? This is The Breakdown. Eighth Grade is a coming-of-age story centered around Kayla, a struggling young person in her final days of middle school. An active consumer and creator of social media, Kayla can be seen flying through Snapchat and Instagram, posting selfies and absorbing the insights of influencers. She, like you, exists in a world that's increasingly defined by digital messaging. Kayla's tied to her phone, anchored to her laptop, and constantly trying to connect with the world through a screen. You know, like the rest of us. Need proof? The average American adult consumes over 10 hours of media each day. Whether we're watching television, listening to the radio, scanning the internet, chilling on Netflix, playing iPhone games while we poop, or sliding into DMs, half of our day is committed to media. And believe it or not, teens like Kayla are spending less time with media than adults. Society is exposed to more media today than at any point in history. But rarely do we ask what effect this constant noise has on our lives and psychology. In an era of fake news, viral marketing, and questionable content, media illiteracy could be a major detriment to the world, civilization, and our own health. Back to Kayla. Appropriately, she models herself as an influencer, like the people she sees online. YouTube Kayla posts motivational messages to teens, targeting kids with low self-image who need bits of Kayla wisdom to break out of their prepubescent slump. Gucci! But as we spend time with Kayla, a rift forms between her real and imagined self. And it's with these circumstances, Kayla's immersion into a media-rich world and her false representation, that we can begin to examine the concept of media literacy and why it's so important. So what is media literacy? The National Association of Media Literacy Educators defines the term as the ability to access, analyze, evaluate, create, and act using all forms of communication. Media literacy represents a necessary, inevitable, and realistic response to the complex, ever-changing electronic environment and communication cornucopia that surrounds us. In a nutshell, media is every curated form of communication that's out there. Films, ads, tweets, snapchats, and texts. And media literacy gives us the skills to examine content, how it affects us, how it affects others, and how we respond. Back to Kayla. In the real world, beyond the camera and without a filter, Kayla is the polar opposite of who she presents online. She's not the confident and wise teenage role model she performs. Even in her private moments, her wisdom and charm are artifice. Kayla is an incredibly shy and lonely kid, struggling to connect with her 13 going on 30 peers. And the word performs is key here, because Kayla may be presenting herself in an unscripted medium, but it's not real. Maybe we should stop for a second and let all this sink in. YouTube Kayla and real life Kayla are two different people. While both may have the best intentions, there's nothing genuine about YouTube Kayla's message. And how does media literacy factor in? First, it allows us to recognize the complex volume of curated information that is being supplied to us in uninterrupted streams. Second, media literacy gives us the skills to ask questions about both the source of the information and how we interpret it. And what does this mean for Kayla? Kayla lacks the ability to understand how heavily influenced she is by the media she consumes. And Kayla is all of us. Let's not pretend for one instant that we're somehow immune to these same forces. You got hyped for Firefest, you started changing the way you do your makeup from a Kim K post, and you made it to this point in the video for all the same reasons that Kayla would have. There's nothing malicious about the two Kaylas, this isn't some catfishing narrative, but she is trying to convince both her viewers and even herself that she is someone else. And from a media literacy perspective, understanding that all communication is curated to convey the will of the originator 
is fundamental to understanding how it affects us. What does Kayla want to convey? That she's not the person everyone thinks she is, and in some ways she's right. Media is omnipresent, and as previously discussed, we live under a firehose level deluge of its influence. The consequences are huge. Marketing, propaganda, lifestyle brands, micro-influencer content, politics, they leverage media to aggressively change your mind. But media literacy doesn't just concern active manipulation, it's about all communications. There are subtle and less direct consequences to the free reign media has in our lives, escalated by our inability to recognize it. What effect does a disproportionately high volume of minority and poverty arrests on cops have on society's perception of crime? Are you watching content that has been tailored to a specific audience? How does big tech's ability to reorder and control news feeds impact the way we interpret information? Understanding the goals of the originator is one of the most important skills in media literacy. What if Kayla had the skills to critically evaluate sources of information and understand bias, not just the online postings, but all communications? What if she understood that every magazine cover is photoshopped, that all films are designed to make you feel a certain way, and that Tom Cruise is a very short man who really likes to run? I'd argue that Kayla and the rest of us would be healthier if we were more literate. There's one final level of media literacy I'd like to address, one that goes beyond the content itself and asks us to examine ourselves. Why is my interpretation of eighth grade different than my parents? And in that film, why does Kayla view the sixth grade version of herself with such hostility? Media literacy recognizes that everyone is going to interpret the originator's message with their own lens, which creates an entirely different challenge. How do we understand the impact of media when each of us walks away with a slightly or drastically different experience? Whoa, 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 whoa. hold it, hold it, hold it. In understanding our interpretation, we understand ourselves and our peers. We've barely scratched the surface, like this is day one stuff, but hopefully I've demonstrated that all of us, not just Kayla, lack the skills to critically interpret media. There's a lot more to unpack with media literacy, and I encourage you to consume more information on the concept. There's several resources online, including John and Hank Green's Crash Course, which has an entire series on media literacy. One final note before I let you go. In adhering to the teachings of media literacy, we would be remiss not to mention that eighth grade is itself a construct of Bo Burnham, complete with all of his biases and ideas about juvenile life. And not to go too deep down the rabbit hole, but this video, this one, the one you're watching right now, it too is a piece of media about media literacy evaluating media written by someone with their own interpretations of media, spoken by me, a completely separate person with my own interpretations about media, and produced and edited by a third person who, well, I don't know, who gives a about that guy, right? Anyway, chew on that. Gucci. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. If you want us to continue down the rabbit hole of media literacy, make sure to let us know. We read all of your comments. All of them. Even you, Doug. <laughs>